In this tutorial, we'll go through how to set up Azure Functions using Terraform and Azure Function Core Tools. So Terraform is a powerful infrastructure as a code tool that you can use to provision cloud resources. We'll be using Terraform today to provision various cloud resources in Azure. So you need to have Terraform already installed on your machine to do this, along with Azure Function Core Tools. We'll use Azure Function Core Tools to deploy our Azure Function to an Azure Function app after we've provisioned those cloud resources first using Terraform. So for Terraform, we need to create a Terraform configuration file, which will describe all the resources that we want provisioned within Azure. So we'll call it main.tf. And these are the resources that we will have provisioned using main.tf. An Azure resource group, an Azure blob storage account, an app service plan, an Azure Function app, Application Insights, and a Log Analytics workspace. I've included the main.tf file in full into the blog post, which I'll link in the description. I'll go through it briefly right now. We're using the HashiCorp Azure RM provider. And one of the feature flags on the provider is that we want to make sure for the resource group, we've set the flag prevent deletion if contains resources to false. Now this is required because of the log, log analytics workspace. It actually gets created by application insights, not by Terraform. And if you want to make sure that it's fully deleted and the resource group that it's deleted, you need to specify this feature flag set to false. So it can clean it up properly with a Terraform destroy. So we've got a resource group that we need to create and I'm going to give it a name and I'll give it a location as well. We'll put everything in West US2 for this Terraform configuration file. You can change this if you want to, that's fine. And we'll specify tags in all the resources so you can quickly locate them. And for example, you can search by source Terraform to see all the resources that you provision using Terraform. You'll also need a storage account. And this is required for function apps. You need to have a storage account credit. And uh, we'll give it a name and we'll give it a resource group name, which we'll pull from the resource group that we previously created. And we'll pull the location from that resource group as well. We'll set the account here to standard and use an account replication type of LRS. And we'll add those same tags as well to the storage account. Next, we've got a service plan resource. This is an app service plan resource. So this is required for function apps. Now we'll be using the consumption plan that has the SKU name of Y1. We'll give it the name Cloud Engineer Skills TF Consumption Plan, and we'll put it in the resource group that we had before and give it that location as well. And we'll use the OS type of Linux for that and set those same tags again. The next resource is the Azure RM Linux Function App. So this is this will house all of our functions that we deploy to Azure. So we'll give it a name and we'll give it the resource group name and location as well. We'll reference the storage account that we created above along with an access key that's required to read and write to that storage account along with the service plan ID which references the app service plan we created before for the consumption plan. In a site configuration tag, we need to put information about the stack. So we're using node version 20. So that needs to be included in the application stack section. And for monitoring purposes, we're going to hook up application insights to this function app. So we need to provide application insights connection string and application insights key. So these end up getting created as app settings, but we can pull them from the application insights resource that we create later in this Terraform file. We'll also include those same tags there as well. Next, we've got the log analytics workspace that we're creating, and it has a name. It has a location and resource group name from the resource group. We're using the SKU per GB 2018, and retention in days is set to 30. This is for reading the logs from your Azure functions. You can get them all ingested into this log analytics workspace, and you can see them all in there. Next, we've got the resource Azure RM Application Insights, 
and this is for monitoring purposes. So we've given it the name and a location and a resource group name. The resource group name and location come from the resource group resource. We also need to reference the workspace ID. So that's that log analytics workspace we created above. And we're using the application type and we're setting that to Node.js. And we're also including those same tags there as well. So that's the main file that we need to create these resources using Terraform. So next we'll actually run a Terraform in it and download the provider that we require to provision these resources. So now we'll run a Terraform in it command to download that provider. So we've initialized Terraform now. What you need to do next is log in using the Azure command line interface with an AZ login. Terraform will use these credentials to interact with your Azure subscription. So next we can run a Terraform apply to start provisioning these resources. So let's do that now. Okay, it will give you a bunch of resources that it wants to provision and you have to enter yes if you want to proceed. Okay, so these six resources that have now been created for you. If you want to check out the Azure portal and see what's been created, have a look under resource groups and you can see this resource group has been created for you. And then you can see at the moment there's five resources underneath it. Now there will be one resource added in the future, which is to do with the Application Insights Smart Detection resource. So you can see in here, these are the resources. You've got your App Insights resource, your Log Analytics workspace, you've got your App Service Plan, your Function App and your Storage Account. So let's have a look in the Function App right now. Now we haven't deployed any functions yet. So when we load this screen, we should see that there's no functions there right now. So why don't we deploy some functions here using the Azure Function Core tools. Okay, so we'll create a local project using func init. Now Azure Functions will be written in Node, so select Node, and we'll be using JavaScript. So it's just running an npm install to install those dependencies. So those dependencies have been installed locally. So what we want to do now is create our function locally first using func new. Then we'll create a simple HTTP trigger Azure function. We'll keep the name as HTTP trigger. And this has been added into the source functions folder. So one thing before we publish this function, we need to update the func ignore file, the dot func ignore file. And we don't want to be pushing any of these Terraform files into our Azure Function app because these are quite large files and we don't want to pollute the Function app workspace there. So what you'll need to do is you'll need to update this func ignore file. Just add these Terraform files as well to be excluded files and folders there. You can get that list from the blog post as well. Now we'll run a publish command to publish the HTTP trigger function into our node function app. Okay, so that's been marked as successful. We can see an invoke URL here. Why don't we try that out in a browser? And we can see hello world. And if we have a look in the Azure portal and we refresh this function app, we should see one function created here. If we select HTTP trigger, we can take a look at the code and it should match what we've defined locally. So that looks like what we've got here in this function. So if we go to invocations, we should see at least one invocation being made to the function and that's showing there. So if we take a look under application insights, we should be getting some information come through about our functions being invoked. So we can see in here the server requests that are being made. And if we look under logs here, we should get some information about the requests that have been made. We can see some of the logs here to do with the HTTP trigger Azure function. So that's application insights. So if we check out 
the other resource here we've got, which is the Log Analytics workspace. We can have a look in there. So if we have a look under logs, we should be able to see some logs for the Azure functions. So under log management, if we look under app traces, we should get some logs to do with the HTTP trigger. Okay, for example, we can see this log message here, initializing function HTTP routes, map function route API slash HTTP trigger. So this is how we can monitor our Azure function with application insights and the log analytics workspace. Okay, so now we're done with this, we can tear down all these resources. We'll use a Terraform destroy to clean all the resources up using Terraform. So use Terraform Destroy to clean up all those resources. What it's come back with is it's planning to destroy six resources. So if you answer yes, it will proceed with destroying those resources for you. So that's it for this tutorial. If you learned something from it, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.